opening hymn this morning is number 439, Blessed Are the Pure of Heart.
mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who have created the heavens and the earth and ourselves in your image, teach us to discern your hand in all your works and to serve you with reverence and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife, partner, who can find? She is more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength, makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands to hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes coverings, her clothing is fine linen and purple, her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders in the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant, the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our song for today is Psalm number one. We'll read it responsibly. I'll read to the asterisks and I invite you to complete each verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked. Their delight is in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season. With leaves that do not wither. It is not so with the wicked. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. The second lesson is from the letter of James. <laughs> Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from the above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something? Do not have it, so you commit murder. You covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. 
Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn this morning is hymn number 61. As we gather at your table, please stand. But it's an interesting 
conversation when we have this, who's the greatest of all time? We have this, I gotta tell you, we have this war within ourselves, uh, not just as Christians, but as human beings as well. Because we have a tension that is constant within us from the time we're born to the time we die on this earth. And this tension is ambition. Because there's healthy ambition that we will go about trying to instill in our children. We want our kids to do their best. We want them, and I want my kids to, finish the sentence, get ahead. <laughs> Listen to the language we use. Get ahead. Get ahead of what or who? Well, of course, get ahead of the other kids. <laughs> right? Because whether we like it or not, we judge ourselves against other people. We, for most of our lives, will judge if we are doing well or not based upon how well other people are doing. Finish this sentence. Keeping up with the Joneses. People on either side of you, the people across the street, how dare they put up their Christmas lights a month earlier than I do mine. They know I do mine at the end of November. We have this competition within ourselves. Now here's Christ. Last week, if you remember, the disciples finally realized, at least they think they realize, exactly who he is. This is not just another teacher or another prophet. Our teacher is the Messiah. This is the one that we've been waiting for all of these centuries. Century after century, the people of, 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 uh, of Israel have been waiting for Messiah. This is the Messiah. Now, there's lots to think and talk about. What did they think and talk about after that? As Christ heads directly back south for the cross. They think about who, who's the greatest. So you can see where their minds are. Why that question? Now, a lot of this is pretty reasonable. He's talking about going back to Jerusalem. He's going to be taken. He's going to be killed. Now, they sort of miss or don't fully take on board the part of and will rise again in three days. So they start to discuss, well, what are we going to do after? You can see how it works, right? Well, who should be in charge? Which one of us? And then what conversation comes from that? Which is the great... Ah, oh, it's a good argument for Peter. You know, John gets in there, and of course, his, his brother James is going to kick in on John's side. You can see where the arguments would take place. Who's the one? And they, they cease, or they not cease, they do not realize that Christ is still and always going to be the one that they need to follow. And as Christians ourselves, we, we live in these struggles constantly because. We're called upon to have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in this world. Now, the one foot in this world, we don't want. But you have to have. And you can say to yourself, I'm not even going to take care of myself. I'm not going to take care of myself. I'm not going to do anything for myself. I'm not going to... Is that a Christian attitude? It isn't. You know why? Because someone else will have to do it. We want our kids to do well. You want your kid to get a good education. You want them to do well. But there's always a tension because that butts up right nicely against and get ahead of the kids next to them. Now don't worry about this because here's the thing. It's, you're not unchristian for having these thoughts. But it's important that you remember that these tensions are the tensions that are always going to exist in our lives. And we will always wrestle with them. But the fact that you are wrestling with them, it's like a parent who says, I'm worried every day that I'm being a good parent. Well, you probably are being a good parent because you worry that you're being a good parent. It's the parents who don't worry about being a good parent who probably are pretty dodgy as parents. And the questions that we ask are as important as the answers that we get. The question is not who is the greatest among us. It's I know Christ is the greatest. And what does that mean for me? What then am I called upon in that reality to do? C.S. Lewis, who I love, I, I found a great quote on greatness. He was writing to someone in the United States. 
And he's asked about greatness, being a great man. Now, sorry, this is sort of non-inclusive language, but you've got to remember he's writing like 60, 70 years ago. So he talks about the man. He says, there's two types of men. He said, the average man, who's sometimes unfaithful to his wife, he's sometimes drunk, he's sometimes deceitful. And that man is lesser than the second type of man. And that's the one whose soul is filled with a great cause. They will sacrifice their own personal appetites, they'll sacrifice their fortune, and sometimes they'll sacrifice their safety for others. But, he goes on to say, the second man is the most dangerous type of man. Because <clears throat> it is the great man, and not the lesser man, who becomes the inquisitor. They can become merciless fanatics. Those most ready to die for a cause may easily become those who are readiest to kill for a cause. And so, once again, I think what Lewis is speaking to and what I'm saying is we, we have to be aware of the tension that we live in and not to see the tension as a bad thing. The tension is that constant questioning about am I being Christ-like in the world? Am I doing this for others? Or am I doing it for myself? And because I promised myself that I would always say something controversial every, pretty well every single sermon, I, I'm going to throw out the controversial one. <laughs> Brave is a very used word today. But I want to challenge you with this, this word. People, pe a lot of people, different people are called brave because of things that they will say or do in public, right? But you have to ask yourself, what's going to come of that act of being brave? Is it going to garner a ton of praise? Or is it not? If it's going to garner a ton of praise, one has to be careful that that brave act is not, in fact, a selfish act. Because we live in a fishbowl today. We live in a bowl where people, I, I kid you not, people, the entire internet was designed by people who study addictions. And people get addicted to likes, they get addicted to support online, they get addicted to being praised online. And sometimes we'll think, I'm being brave by making X statement, but then X statement gets you thousands of likes. Are you, in fact, being brave? Only you and God know. But it's that examination that we need to have in our hearts to recognize the tension, to recognize that that quarrel, that conflict lives within us, to, to embrace it. As long as I am constantly aware that I'm being pulled by this world's concept of greatness, and I'm also being pulled by the concept of greatness that Christ gives to us. As long as I know that that's there, I can avoid it and always live in the kingdom of God. We'll now have our prayers to be. I invite you to sit, stand, or kneel, whatever posture uh, works for you. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them true knowledge of himself, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do. And this week in particular, we pray for Robert, Torsten, Ray, and Kimberly Harvard, Moira Reed, Pierre and Marianne Reinhardt, Audrey Robinson, and Terry Romans. Let us pray to pray the Lord. Lord for those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And this week we remember Richard, Joan, Olive, 
Lynn, Rod, Marilee, Rita, Diana, Craig, Judy, Kevin, Doreen, and Fred. For our country, especially with the election coming up tomorrow, that the Lord will help us contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. And this week we're asked to remember those suffering in Afghanistan and in Haiti. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and he is infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Accept our offering this day, and help us to live in peace and harmony for all your creation. For the sake of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, gathering the one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit, and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us.
creation yearns for its fulfillment in your Son. May we who have shared in holy things grow into maturity in him. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Just before our closing hymn, we'll have our announcements. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Nice to see you this morning. And uh, I have uh, quite a few announcements, but they are in the bulletin and uh, online, so I hope I'll keep them brief. Uh, this Wednesday coming, Nicole is taking a vacation day, so the office will be closed. And um, the fund script order is due October 3rd, so if you uh, need some cards, please. Uh, See Nicole or Jody. God's Garden are for children 4 to 12. We're doing it in person and virtual, so we ask that if you would like to bring your children, Mary V would love to see them. She's got a good team of teachers working with her, and uh, but it is online also. Thanksgiving flowers. Um, we're taking fun uh, collections for those. You can fill out the little white envelope in the narthex and uh, give it to either Arlene or put it on the collection plate. And uh, you'd like that done by October 5th. And also, uh, the Thanksgiving People's Pulpit um, is coming out, and Mary Lee, or uh, sorry, I didn't say that. Mary Ann is looking for articles for the People's Pulpit. So if you can come up with a recipe or a dream you have or anything, that would interest the congregation, please send it to Mary Ann. Uh, we are doing on Thanksgiving Sunday a uh, food collection. And uh, we do that on Thanksgiving, and then we'll take it over to the Stittsville Food Bank. So if you could just put that in the back of your mind and pick up a couple things, we'll have a table with the Thanksgiving offering there. The choir, we're so happy to hear that uh, Bonnie is going to be directing the choir, and they're going to be meeting for the first time Thursday, the 23rd of this month at 7 o'clock. Cornerstone, which is our musical group, they are meeting Tuesday, the 21st at 7.30. Uh, new voices are needed in both groups, and we would just love to have you come out and join either of the two groups or both. The youth confirmation classes, um, Reverend Lee is running those, and uh, please call the church office if you have uh, uh, youth that is at confirmation age. And the bishop's visit is December 5th. That will be when confirmation is. And uh, we hope to have a good sized confirmation class. The Canada Stittsville Refugee Sponsorship Group are holding a fundraising on the, from the 25th to the 27th of uh, September. There is information in your bulletin, but Dave Dalloway from our parish is going to be rocking in a rocking chair, and you can join into, um, by doing walking or running or rocking in rocking chairs yourself, but if you don't wish to and you'd like to sponsor David, there he is. And uh, I am going to be rocking Saturday and Sunday from 9 in the morning until 6 at night on our patio up there. <laughs> I would love anyone who would like to come and rock with us or rock and roll with us. Come and sing, join, uh, have, maybe, have maybe a little free with us, have a lunch with people next door. So if you'd like to come and make a donation, uh, We'll be out there walking and love to see a few people come out and visit during the day. That's a lot of rocking on David's part. <laughs> so maybe we all should pass by and just say hey to him to wake him up out of his rocking chair. <laughs> anyway, thanks for that, Dave. Uh, the ACW are meeting again, and we're so excited about that. October 4th, 1 o'clock in the church hall. Light refreshments will be served, and uh, we will be putting... Uh, the safety protocols for COVID in place, so uh, we'll keep it as safe as possible, but we're happy that we can get together. Uh, St. Luke's, want to say thank you for the mugs. We had such a great amount of mugs turned in, and they were thrilled to pieces, and they 
we still got some to take down, so they're really going to be happy. And uh, Judy Galloway, who's uh, looking after making the puddings for our, it's a bazaar, but we're doing some of the bake sale later, and there's a variety of things that are coming out. But Judy would like us to save cans. And the ones we do are the habitat pea soup, the tomato cans, or the small soup cans. Correct, Judy? The medium soup cans. The aluminum soup cans. Medium. 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 Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, my hearing too. Anyway, if uh, you have some of those, if you could just keep bringing them in as we go along for the next uh, month or two, because uh, we really would need those, and they work real well for the puddings. Anyway, the rest of the announcements are in the bulletin, and uh, nice to see you all today, and have a great week. We stand. As you go forth into the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may they see Christ's face in you, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 500, Sister, Let Me Be Your Servant. Hallelujah.